Hello everyone. This is Dr. Madhusudan Rao on the program I teach medical students. The topic of today's lesson is infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis could be acute or subacute. It could be bacterial or non-bacterial. So bacterial endocarditis is commonly caused by the streptococcal virulence alpha hemolytic streptococcus. Staphylococcal RES is becoming more prevalent in nowadays, in this present era of interventional cardiology. It could be caused by viruses or fungi. Fungal endocarditis is uh, more life-threatening and resistant to treatment and associated with high degree of morbidity and mortality. Well, despite the availability of the current prophylaxis, there is increasing prevalence of infectious endocarditis because of the associated risk factors, especially the condition presents with the non-specific manifestations, and there is a wide range of bacterial agents responsible for this condition, and the undue delay in the diagnosis and delay in the institution of effective treatment are some of the factors responsible for morbidity and mortality. We are going to touch this particular condition in brief with regard to the etiological etiology, risk factors, clinical presentation, laboratory evaluation and treatment. As I told you, bacterial endocarditis, infective endocarditis could be bacterial or non-bacterial, could be acute or subacute, associated with high degree of mortality and morbidity. Okay, it could affect the native walls or prosthetic valves. The risk factors, nature of the infecting organisms, there has been changing scenario causing delay in the diagnosis because of wide range of the infective agents that are involved in this particular condition. The other factor being lack of awareness to predict the threat of infective endocarditis. These lead, factors lead to delay in the treatment. Okay. There are other risk factors like IV, IV drug abuses and cardiac surgery. The patients are immunosuppressants, steroids, or diabetes. Okay, these factors they are going to complicate the situation, making the individual susceptible for this life-threatening infection. What are the etiological factors? Staphylococcus viridans is supposed to be the most common organism <coughs> responsible for endocarditis. Okay, usually occurs following dental surgery on individuals with poor oral hygiene, said diabetic person with poor oral hygiene. So he is always at the risk of developing endocarditis, even though there is no organic valvular lesion. So it can affect the normal valves in this scenario where there is risk factors. Staphylococcal RES is commonly involved in the prosthetic wall endocarditis. Besides staphylococcal epidermitis, another organism, centrococci, pseudomonas, are also involved in the prosthetic endocarditis. Fungal, it is usually post surgical endocarditis, and uh, it is associated with high degree of morbidity and mortality because of resistance to treatment. Well, in the present year of interventional cardiology, infective endocarditis caused by staphylococcal RAS has become more prevalent. This has to be kept in mind. Well, the, besides the damage to the endocardium and the valvular structures, thromboembotic manifestations and stroke complicate the management of infective endocarditis. So the diagnosis and the management of infective endocarditis is not an easy task.
well, some predisposing factors. Cardinal heart diseases with high tension flow, they're more susceptible. Rheumatic heart disease, with the involvement of mitral and aortic valve are more susceptible for infective endocarditis. Cardiac surgery, dental and other surgical procedures, poor oral hygiene, skin infections, and drug, IV drug abuse. These are some of the risk factors to mention. Coming to the clinical manifestations. The clinical manifestations could be subtle and prolonged fever with um, non-specific manifestations of general weakness, arthralgia, and cutaneous manifestations. Or it could be acute with high rise of temperature and septicemia and shock. There could be cardiovascular manifestations with the appearance of the new onset murmurs, especially the regurgitated murmurs. And if the patient presents with a congestive heart failure, in a known case of congenital pulmonary diseases, okay, so we have to suspect infective endocarditis. GI manifestations in the form of the abdominal pain spirinomegaly, CNS manifestations in the form of uh, the patient may go into confusion and uh, stupor and altered sensorium, may present with meningismus and sense of meningitis. And uh, other features of the stroke and embolic manifestations. Skin manifestations are usually of delayed manifestations, secondary to the immune complex formation. And presence with uh, the splinter hemorrhages, osseous nodes, or genital lesions. And patient may also present with the immune complex, glomerulonephritis. This picture shows rot spot, that is, retinal hemorrhages in a given case of infective endocarditis. So this is a hemorrhagic spot in the retina, described as rot spot. <clears throat> These are the osseous nodes, which are painful. These are the genital lesions. These are the splinter hemorrhages. Well, the diagnosis. Based upon the clinical history and the known case of uh, valvular diseases or uh, history of the risk factors taken into consideration and uh, play a high risk of suspicion to make the Provisional diagnosis and take the blood cultures. Okay, preparation of the area is very important while collecting the sample for blood culture. And give five cultures, minimum five cultures, and look for the research. Other laboratory data like uh, the blood counts, CSR, CRP, CPR, and CRP should be carried out. 2D echo. 2D echo shows the presence of visitations. And uh, the size and site and the type of the visitations are to be recorded. Okay. If the size of the visitation is more than two centimeters, and the visitations are pedunculated, there is always a risk of embolization. And take the juice criteria in the diagnosis. There are five minor criteria, or, um, two major criteria and one minor criteria. Or one major criteria and 
say well, I am going to read this kind of thing. Okay, this kind of thing. Two positive blood cultures for common organisms are three positive blood cultures for atypical organisms. Uh, presence of vegetation is a new wall with new wall with vegetation on 2D. So what are the major criteria? Two positive blood cultures for common organisms is major criteria. Or three positive blood cultures for atypical organisms is again considered as a major criteria. The other one is presence of vegetation and presence of new wall regurgitation on two vehicles. These are the major criteria. Minor criteria being fever, presence of predisposing conditions, signs of vasculitis, that is, ocellus nodes, generations, etc., and as an immune phenomena, embolic features, and positive rheumatoid factors. Diagnosis is considered when there are two major criteria. Uh, one major and three minor criteria are only five minor criteria. This is added in the condition replacement. So these are the two criteria that are taken in the diagnosis of infected and of heart disease. So with the advent of the antibody therapy, still there is high mortality accounting for accounting to 50 to 60 percent. The complications include heart failure, which is resistant to treatment, vegetations involving aortic and mitral walls, more liable for the embolic manifestations, myocardial abscess, and rupture into the pericardial myth, resulting in the pericardial abscess. Okay. Toxic myocarditis and systemic emboli, pulmonary embolization, mycotic aneurysms, rupture of sinus of all salva, valve obstruction, so the best taking complication, Metast metastatic abscesses, and immune complex nephritis. Well, coming to treatment. Initiate early treatment when the diagnosis is more probable. With antibiotic choice based on culture report for a period of four to six weeks. Well, antibiotic therapy is adjusted based on the patient's response and the culture reports during the follow up or during the process of treatment. Give diuretics to treat congestive heart failure, other steps of management of congestive heart failure. Surgical intervention is in intractable congestive heart failure with removal of processes. Fungal endocarditis is life threatening and challenging. Treated with amphotericin B and 5 fluorocytosine. Well, anticoagulant therapy has been controversial. So what are the indications for surgical intervention? Number one is fungal endocarditis, heart failure, which is intractable, not responding to medical management, recurrent septic emboli, conduction disturbances with enthymias, sepsis, not responding to antibiotics. So in these situations, go ahead with the surgical intervention, with the dissection of the emboli, or visitations, or removal of the processes, etc. Well, thank you very much, my dear students, for patient listening. And uh, if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. And I welcome your feedback and comments to improve my videos. With this lecture, we have concluded nearly 
12 topics in cardiovascular system. You can find these topics, uh, topics in the cardiovascular system in my YouTube channel, which include it, uh, topics include that is fetal circulation, congenital heart diseases, cyanotic heart acid, and rheumatic fever, rheumatic mitral stenosis, aortic regurgitation, and uh, say mm, some more uh, topics I covered that includes uh, tetralogy of fallows, dead spells, and uh, Remember some more is a day. Cerebral circulation, etc. Please watch my videos in the cardiovascular system because there was a wonderful topic that we have, we have uploaded that it has been uh, viewed by so many people extending beyond 100. That is auscultation of the heart. So I'm sure these topics that are uploaded in uh, the YouTube videos on cardiovascular system will benefit the students enormously. Thank you very much. And see you again in the next class. Until that time, bye-bye.